For more than half a century, utility aircraft have served as the lifeline of remote communities around the world. As the name implies, a utility aircraft is a versatile aircraft used for general purposes like transporting people, cargo or supplies. In regions without air-round roads or dependable ground transport, aircraft such as the DSC-2 Beaver, the Pilatus Porter, and Cessna Caravan have enabled communities not just to survive but to thrive. These aircraft deliver essential services including fuel, mail, and staple foods. They deliver medical supplies and are used for emergency evacuations. They help people from the community to move around, even deliver school material and government support personnel. In many cases, they are the only viable means of transport, especially in rugged terrain or in harsh climates. Across the globe, thousands of communities rely entirely on aviation for year-round access. For example, 201 communities in Alaska are air-reliant, 140 in Canada, 1,471 in Mexico, 487 in Indonesia, and the list goes on. A conservative global estimate suggests at least 5,000 communities depend on air transport for essential support. For decades, these regions have been served by rugged, high-payload airframes such as the Pilatus PC-6 Porter, the Cessna Caravan, the Havilland DHC-2 Beaver, Britain Norman Islander, and the Antonov AN-2. These aircraft can haul up to 3,000 pounds and operate from short, unprepared strips, offering unmatched versatility in challenging environments. There has been a lot of development in electric aviation lately. However, the efforts have largely focused on either urban air mobility or regional passenger transport. On one hand, we have air taxi companies like Joby, Vertical Aerospace, and Archer. And on the other hand, we have regional platforms like Heart Aerospace's ES30 and Aviation Alice. Electrified propulsion has enabled ambitious visions of flying car and veto aircraft. Yet, short takeoff and landing and ultra short takeoff and landing platforms, which are arguably the best suited for remote logistics, have received far less attention. Aside from solutions like the Electra EL9, the e stall space remains largely vacant. This is striking because the market need is clear. Thousands of communities depend on exactly this type of mission profile, and e stall aircraft have a simpler path to certification. Electric propulsion provides unique advantages for remote operations. It is not only more economical thanks to lower electricity and maintenance costs, but also opens the door to autonomous flight. Removing the need for pilots further reduces mission expenses. For cargo transport, this also means aircraft can be deployed without putting lives at risk. Moreover, e stall aircraft can be designed to operate much more quietly. Perhaps most importantly, renewable energy is ubiquitous. Even in remote areas, electricity or hydrogen can be generated locally, allowing the aircraft to be recharged or refueled on site using sustainable sources. This eliminates the need to transport fuel and removes the efficiency penalty of carrying round trip fuel. And finally, electric propulsion and distributed fans enable superior low speed handling blown flap augmentation, and quieter stall operations, which are the key advantages for short takeoff and landing missions in sensitive environments. Interestingly, the NASA X-57 program, which aimed to push the boundaries of electric aviation, estimated that energy consumption could be reduced by a factor of 3 to 5, even with stall capability incorporated. The X-57 was the electrified version of the Technam P20060. The program was able to partially validate this concept before budget constraints ultimately led to its cancellation. It's important for aircraft companies to learn the lessons from Lilium. Lilium, while technologically bold, grappled with the immense power required for vertical takeoff due to high disk loading. This power is estimated to be eight times its cruise power requirement. Although energy calculations supported its mission envelope, it was the peak power delivery constraints and reliance on cutting-edge battery chemistry that ultimately proved untenable.
rather than pivoting towards a staller architecture where distributed electric ducted fans would have excelled, Lilium held to its VTOL design. This ultimately led to technical and commercial collapse. Archer's acquisition of Lilium's IP may yet open the door to revisiting stalled configuration and leveraging that engineering foundation. Let's now look at some emerging players that are venturing into the development of electric utility aircraft. The first one is Electra Solar's EL10 Skylax. It's a 10-seater with 300km range using existing battery technology. Electra Solar from Germany have already proven technology through their one-seat and two-seat platforms. Electra Solar's design philosophy is centered on efficiency and minimal power consumption. Their efficiency is more apparent in the specs of their two-seater trainer. With a battery of just 30 kilowatt hours, the Electra trainer has a flight endurance of 2.5 hours and a range of up to 300 kilometers. And as the name suggests, Electra Solar have the experience of integrating solar PV panels in the wings. Electra Solar takes a ground-up approach, using accumulated aerodynamics and energy optimization knowledge to scale towards a viable utility aircraft. They have already developed a system capable of unmanned flight. The EL-10 Skylex will have a noise level of less than 50 decibels. This again is an important parameter for multi-frequency aircraft serving communities. The next aircraft is the electrified Britain Norman Islander, which is the output of the program called Project Fresen. This is being developed through a partnership between Cranfield Aerospace Solutions and Logan Air. Unlike the Skylax, the electrified Islander will be a hydrogen electric system. Fuel cells powered with liquid hydrogen will be used. This aircraft is being designed to do flights to the Scottish Isles, where Logan Air already operates. The islands have an abundance of wind and tidal energy, using which green hydrogen can be produced locally to fuel the aircraft. The modified Islander will have an external hydrogen tank hung under the wing. Hydrogen will be stored in gaseous form at 350 bar. Although this hydrogen tank would create drag, it would be overcome with extra power that the motorized propulsors will provide. The fuel cell is packaged inside the nacelle just behind the motor, which is a very clever way to utilize existing space and minimize drag. Also included in this packaging is a state-of-the-art cooling system that will cool the heat generated by hydrogen fuel cell system. The result is that 9-seater Islander remains 9-seater even in its electrified version. Project Fresen demonstrates a compelling renewable aviation ecosystem supporting regional lifeline operations. So to conclude, utility aviation has sustained remote communities for generations. As the industry moves towards electrification, stall and use stall aircraft represent one of the most meaningful and yet overlooked frontiers. With the right designs, electric propulsion can deliver safer, cleaner and more capable aircraft for the people who depend on them the most. Best of all, it would be able to operate at a much lower cost. The future of electric flight will not be built only above cities. It will be built in places where aviation is life itself. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.